There it is. I'm Fred Walker with North Dakota Tourism. Come with me on a short tour of my state. North Dakota is home to epic adventures, where some of America's legendary icons like Sitting Bull, George Custer, and Theodore Roosevelt paved the way for the adventurer of today. so far at this point in the video I am driving I'm on my way to North Dakota for the first stop on the uh, Northwest ice tour okay I understand some of you are probably gonna ask yourself you know what what in the world <clears throat> is the Northwest ice tour okay well, let me take you back to the start the beginning of the Northwest ice tour is actually the beginning of the Montana ice tour now some of you are probably also asking yourself what in the world is the Montana ice tour pretty much something that I just wanted to create. I just wanted to create something, whether that was a video or a movie or a documentary or something. Okay, I just wanted to create something. So this this small little spark of a passion, okay, gradually exploded to a bonfire for that, that search of walleye, okay? That search of, of walleyes through the ice. And um, to, to get on a good walleye bite through the ice is something special. I've only been ice fishing for probably what is it, four, four, about four years now. Yeah, it just grew from this this weird passion of ice fishing and wanting to go catch fish in new bodies of water for the most part. I wanted to go explore. I wanted to go check out new places around Montana. Thus, the Montana Ice Tour. And I was just coming off uh, the New York series and I just wanted to play around Montana. And ironically, Montana's so big, you can do a lot of playing. So. That's kind of the underlying basis of the Northwest Ice Tour. It's the, the, the accumulation of just wanting to go and catch fish in random bodies of water. And I do know that the north, Northwest here, North Central of America, is kind of the, the sweet spot, the heartbeat of walleye fishing in America. Um, so you got Minnesota, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Montana, South Dakota. I mean, what, what other places are you going to go ice fishing for walleyes at? whether it's Canada, you know? So I figured if I wanted to go, the number one walleye destination that I wanted to go, which was Mille Lacs. I wanted to get to Mille Lacs. That's kind of the, I don't know. If you're from Montana, you want to go to Minnesota. If you're from Minnesota, you want to come to Montana and fish. That's how she goes, you know? Uh, granted, a lot of people want to come here from around the world and catch 12 inch stock rainbow trout too. So it is what it is, but still that, that desire to go somewhere else, catch a fish, just throw that on the belt loop, you know? That was kind of the, the driving passion for, for the Northwest Ice Tour, so. Yeah, usually this is a Montana thing, but uh, you know, places like Mille Lacs, Sacagawea, you know, all of South Dakota for the most part. I mean, this is some insane ice fishing that, that I wanted to go try, I wanted to go see for myself, so. It was fun to bring you guys along, it's a lot of work. Uh, it's a lot of work changing batteries all the time. With that being said, guys, I got my coffee. I hope you got yours, and uh, cheers. Hope you enjoy. I might jump in a little bit later, kind of describe some other things. I don't know. I get in a hurry and stuff like that. So, so without any further ado, guys, I will roll the footage. Culture, adventure, and comfort at the end of the trail. From the Hadatsa, Lakota, Arikara, and Mandan nations to the discoveries of Lewis and Clark, and the great cattle drives of the Northern Plains. The romance of the Wild West lives on here. I'd personally like to invite you to North Dakota, where you too can arrive a guest and leave a legend. Alrighty guys, welcome to the series. Start of the, Mo or the Montana. This is the Northwest Ice Tour, so uh, should be a pretty fun one. I'm out here solo dolo right now. It says Sakakawea. 
up here in North Dakota, good looking for some walleye. So stay tuned, strap in boys. We just got the truck on the ice. There's probably 20 inches here and uh, we're gonna get the pop-up set up. We're camping in the truck tonight. Stay tuned. All right, guys, got the hunt set up. I got the clam and I pretty much immediately destroyed my negative terminal on my battery connection. On the back side here of the battery, you got positive, negative, and they're connected by these little clips. And uh, I must have just been a little too rough with it. And I ended up pulling the negative terminal off the clip, right? Broke the wire. Didn't get that on camera. Um, but as I was setting up everything, that happened. And so I ended up sitting there for about 30 minutes, just like this, um, wondering how the hell I screwed that up so horrible and how I'm gonna fix it. Uh, what I did was I got some line cutters, I cut the plastic, exposed the wire, and then I had some uh, electrical tape, thank God. Uh, taped the open wire to the terminal and fished like that for the next uh, 24 hours, so. Start. That's the story of that, and ironically, the second that I fixed it, there was fish down there, and I caught a fish, realized the hoodie wasn't on. Roll the footage. All right, boys. We just pounded the first walleye of the night on the dinner bell, right in the snoot. He's probably 16, 17. We're going to let him go. Wow. There he is. Ooh. Let's get you going. Back down the hole he goes. There we go. All right, guys. So that's the first walleye of the ice tour. Um, camera was off. I thought it was on. Ironically, I just changed the battery in it. So, um, wow. First fish. Nice one. I'm going to call that one 18. Um, he came up and walloped it. So pretty great spot here. Uh, can't complain. Let's get back to it. Dinner bell went womp. Gosh, dang it, guys. Don't ask me how, but I always screw up like that first fish. Always. Thought I had the camera on, wasn't even on. I didn't even measure that. God dang it, dude, I gotta get a bump board. I got this little thing on the bottom of the sled, but it's all, it's a sticker and it's all janky as hell, so. What is this, dude? Oh, it's a Cisco. I knew it was a Cisco. Am I still recording? Yes. I don't even want to touch this thing, dude. That's kind of funny, though. Hoo-hoo, that smells bad. Who? all right, guys. So, we just caught that Tula Bee. We're using this little Rapala Rip and Wrap. I caught that Tula Bee right there and then on that rod right here we got the frostbite dinner bell with a live minnow on just down there ripping right now we're sitting in at about 29 feet and uh we're just playing the night out um we will be here tomorrow morning and then we're headed out to the next stop so um looks like we're already doing pretty good we got that walleye on the board i should have measured it I need a bump board or something that can like measure fish, you know? I screwed that one up. So not the first, not the last, but still great fish. Um, wish I had the hook set on film. Thought the camera was on, but it wasn't. So it's 8.47, 8.47 uh, at night, just enjoying this night bite. So we got dinner bell, live minnow and uh, rip and wrap. Gonna see if we can get a bang.
gosh, I needed the GoPro on the freaking Humminbird right now, dude. Those are just more tulabies. Oh, screw tulabie, dude. I don't need a tulabie. I need more walleye, dude. And of course, guys, rods we're using are Della Bay. I got the 15 for two and the lamp lighter right here. There he is. Oh, it's another Cisco, dude, or a gold. Give that a quick little charge. Cisco seemed to like the rattle bait a bit. Dude, I'm so pissed I did not have the camera on for that hook set on the walleye. Gosh, I would have turned it on too. Uh oh, there's already a fish down there. Look at that. Did I just drop to a fish? Am I on? Yes. This is a good one. This is a real good one. Got another one through the hole. Another nice walleye, guys. Another nice walleye. Dude, that's a stud. That is a stud of a walleye. He's 16. He's close to 16, guys. Dinner bell chomped, dude. Back he goes. Two walleyes. A, that was another stud of a walleye, dude. You guys, it never fails. I literally turn the music on and a fish shows up, you know? Oh, come on. He's literally on it, dude. It's a big mark, dude. Damn, bro. That was a huge mark. I am going to switch to a flutter spoon. It's the orange and pink one. Oh, God dang it. I tore the negative terminal off. Whew, okay, guys. It, current time is, I believe it's 9.45. We've been out here for about two hours, I think. Um, we haven't even finished one beer. Wind's picking up a little bit. It's about 35, 40 degrees. I think when I arrived here, it, is, it was 45 degrees. It's a really super nice day. I'm not quite sure what we have in store for tonight, but uh, the one goal for today was to um, was to just get here and um, get a couple fish on the ice, get the hut set up, um, kind of clean the truck out, get the, the beds squared away. Probably one of the main reasons I came here to this lake, at least, was just to cut the drive in half. Shoo! I think I'm probably going to head back to the truck, get that set up and uh, maybe have a little bit of dinner. I don't really know what I'm gonna have. What I am concerned about is getting out here for tomorrow's bite. Um, hopefully we can get on a good bite tomorrow. Obviously the morning bite and the night bite are the two most active bites, especially when it's ice fishing. So throughout this tour, this trip, I'm gonna try and concentrate, try and focus on that morning bite, 30 minutes before, 30 minutes after, be set up, be ready, be fishing. Um, probably it's my best chance to try and land a giant and or just the best bite window at that current time so i'm pretty tired i could use a nice little snooze and uh get rejuvenated for tomorrow so the next time you guys see me we're gonna be in the drive. um we have a little bit of a mess i guess you could say there ain't much light back here but i got my bed um what it consists of is an air mattress uh a temperfedic temperfedic a temperpedic foam mattress a very firm one and then on top of that is a temperpedic mattress a very soft one and then a sheet three pillows 
a zero degree sleeping bag and a blanket. So it's pretty comfortable. The only problem is that um, it's kind of hard to like lay out and expand your body. It's convenient. So I also get to use my truck as a bit of a generator because I have inverters that I can plug into the cigarette lighters and charge various batteries, whether that's hummingbird batteries, drill batteries, camera batteries. There's a bunch of batteries to charge this trip. So that's how we're going to charge them for the most part. We also have a solar panel, but I this is the first day though. Should be a fun one, guys. We got a fun tour planned out for you guys. This is thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you have not already. And if you like any part of this series, this tour, these episodes, the best way you can support this channel for free, leave a like, be a subscriber, and drop a comment. So with that being said, I am gonna hit the hay. And uh, we're gonna get some fish in the hard water. So can't wait. We'll see you tomorrow.